Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, and uh, welcome to week three, lecture four, dynamic atomic force microscopy methods. Uh, this week we've been focusing on uh, beta simulations, uh, both uh, uh, tapping mode approach and uh, tapping mode uh, scanning tools. And um, the uh, main feature from last time that we talked about was the fact that uh, scanning simulations in VEDA are very realistic. They allow you to play around with um, uh, different feature properties that sit on a substrate so you can kind of create your landscape over which you want to scan, uh, endow a feature with certain heights or negative heights if you want to trench, different uh, tip sample interaction properties uh, relative to the substrate, um, and the tip actually approaches the required set point and scans using your feedback control parameters. And the last time we talked at some length about how the choice of feedback, uh, especially integral gain, influences the topographies and the error signals and so on. Uh, what we're going to focus on today is uh, exploring how VEDA can help uh, shed some light on controller instabilities. And uh, what we mean by that is the fact that um, when one scans in a sample, uh, very often uh, the images don't make sense. Uh, there are patterns that emerge that shouldn't emerge. Uh, there are uh, there are effects where, for example, the heights become completely incorrect and there are, these things happen in certain ranges of the image and other ranges, it's bad, everything is going okay. So these things happen on a pretty regular basis in AFM and uh, today's lecture is to uh, really talk about how VEDA can help provide some uh, intuition and, and rationale behind how it all comes together. Um, we have talked already about one kind of imaging instability that can happen in tapping mode AFM, which is the coexistence of an attractive and repulsive regime of oscillation. And uh, what happens in this case is uh, the fact that um, when one is, if one chooses a set point ratio um, where two different z values give you the same oscillation amplitude, uh, then there's a potential for the controller to get confused and jump from one, the same amplitude, but at two different z locations, leading to very different variations in height. And we had discussed uh, examples in the literature where this had been demonstrated. Uh, so we're not going to talk about the attractor repulsive uh, bi-stability today because we've covered that before. Uh, we want to speak of another kind of instability that can happen when dealing with soft cantilevers and sticky substrates. Um, so we would go to NanoHub uh, for this and uh, we would do the scanning tool. Um, and the problem that we're trying to solve is uh, shown here in this, uh, in this schematic. Uh, there's a cantilever, a soft cantilever, low Q factor. Um, uh, the natural frequency is 40 kilohertz. We choose the drive frequency to be exactly equal to the natural frequency. Uh, the rest of the parameters are given here in the appendix. Uh, what's interesting about this simulation is we got a flat substrate, absolutely flat substrate. So you choose the height of the feature to be zero. Uh, the substrate itself, uh, we assume, has no adhesion. So it's basically a very low surface energy uh, surface. Uh, which can be modeled using a Hertz contact mechanics model. The feature, on the other hand, uh, is actually a soft material, uh, a one gigapascal uh, material, pretty much just like the substrate, but it has got high adhesion on it. So think of a, uh, you know, a you know, very sticky, viscous substrate, same modulus as the, as, as, as the substrate, but a very viscous adhesive patch, if you will, uh, which is a feature sitting uh, on a substrate which has exactly the same modulus but is not adhesive and is not viscous. And uh, we want a set point ratio of 0 0.7, so 70%, and we're going to scan fast at 10 scan lines a second. And uh, the, the amplitude far from the surface is 6, na six nanometers, and uh, we would like to understand uh, how we're able to scan this nominally flat sample. So uh, if you go to VEDA and choose example uh, number five, which is controller instability, all these parameters and feature properties are already loaded. Uh, so you pretty much have to uh, just uh, change the uh, feedback controller, the proportional gain, and the uh, uh, 
the, uh, the, the integral gain if you need to, and then hit the top right button on simulate, and the probe actually approaches the sample on the substrate, reaches the desired set point amplitude, and then starts scanning, goes over the feature, uh, and tries to go over the feature. Uh, the results can be displayed in many forms, as we have seen before. What I've shown here is the uh, measured topography that measures how the controller is moving the base of the cantilever up and down uh, in order to keep the amplitude, in order to try and keep the amplitude constant. Now, what we find is that when we are on the substrate, which is without adhesion, without viscosity, uh, we're doing pretty well. The controller uh, has a nice constant value. Uh, however, as soon as we hit the um, the feature, something pretty dramatic seems to happen here. We find this, the Z controller is moving up and down by a very large amount, uh, you know, several nanometers, uh, trying to keep the amplitude constant, and this very jagged profile would appear, you can imagine, if you were doing an image, it would appear as a sequence of, um, uh, because this is a line scan, so you just have to imagine developing the line scan along the third axis to see that you'd get these ridges, a whole bunch of ridges, as soon as you hit this uh, sticky feature. Uh, so the first, uh, uh, the first response when one sees this is that perhaps you've chosen a very large integral gain. Because uh, we have shown before that if the integral gain becomes very large, you can get these oscillatory kind of stabilities. So the first thought is, well, uh, this must be because we got too high an integral gain, so you may want to reduce the integral gain a little bit. If you do that and repeat the simulation uh, and show, see what kind of uh, height profile you get, and you find that lo and behold, you have not improved the situation. Uh, the Z controller is still moving up and down by several nanometers. What has changed is the frequency of these up and down motions, but the fact that it goes up and down, up and down, not knowing where to sit, basically, uh, still persists even when your um, integral gain has been reduced. When one looks a little more detail at the um, at the uh, indentation into the sample and to the amplitude of the sample, one sees some very interesting things. On the left is shown the error signal, the amplitude. And what we find is that um, while the the amplitude is nice and constant on the substrate, as soon as one hits the uh, feature, the amplitude suddenly plunges, and then the Z controller. Uh, tries to move things and get the controller amplitude back up to the desired value at the 70% set point. It's not able to, and the amplitude goes back down again rapidly, and this keeps repeating itself. And if one looks at the figure on the right, uh, the results allow you to plot, uh, you can click on the results and plot the indentation as a, as a function of uh, the, the distance along the scan, and we find that um, uh, as the amplitude goes down, suddenly uh, it leads to very large spikes in indentation, which are very likely to cause a lot of damage to the sample. So this kind of a situation, this kind of an instability, uh, would be very damaging to a soft material that we're trying to image. The question is, what is exactly happening? Uh, you know, we've tried changing the integral gain, and uh, that didn't seem to help us. What, what we might want to do in such a situation is to do another experiment. To, you know, if the scanning experiment is not really working out and there are instabilities, we don't seem to figure out why it's happening, uh, our recommendation is always to go to a dynamic approach curve. So uh, what we would do now is uh, go and choose uh, uh, the, uh, the basic dynamic approach curves tool uh, and perform with the same conditions an approach curve on the substrate material and another one on the feature material. And how to do that is uh, described uh, in the appendix uh, of this lecture as well. All right, so when one goes through the dynamic approach curve using the properties of the substrate uh, in this particular example, uh, the amplitude decreases as a function of z as shown. You see the amplitude is pretty constant, and then due to the interactions, the amplitude decreases. However, when one repeats the simulation for um, the, uh, uh, the feature, which has got very high adhesion and has um, a lot of viscosity, one finds that the amplitude begins to decrease, and then it suddenly drops to a very small value. The other important thing is if you look at the phase of the response, here you find that when you're dealing with the uh, substrate, as you, the amplitude is decreasing, the phase is always less than 90 degrees phase lag, which tells us that uh, we're in the repulsive interactions when we're on the substrate. This shouldn't, be, this shouldn't come as a surprise because uh, we have made sure that there is no uh, attractive forces on the substrate. Uh, 
On the feature, on the other hand, uh, we have included a very large uh, uh, adhesion, which means, and as you can see by the phase, that when the amplitude decreases, it's basically initially we are in the attractive regime of oscillation, and then the amplitude suddenly dies and goes to zero. Uh, why this happens uh, is basically related to an effect which we have studied in the context of static force distance curves, um, that uh, if the cantilever is brought very close to the sample, and if the attractive forces are very large, remember the tip, uh, especially for soft cantilevers, is going to get, uh, is going to snap into the sample. And this can actually start happening even in dynamic AFM uh, when you're dealing with very sticky samples and uh, soft cantilevers. And so this tells us that what we were trying to do in the previous simulation was we were choosing a set point amplitude of 0.7, uh, set point amplitude ratio, which is shown in the dashed uh, red line up here. And you can imagine that when you're on the um, substrate, uh, that set point ratio is fine and it allows us to, uh, the, the controller can move up and down to get that uh, amplitude because the amplitude as a function of z is a nice uh, straight line. So if, if there's an error signal and the amplitude changes, the z just has to move left and right to get back to the right amplitude. However, when one goes on the feature, we had chosen a set point ratio of 0 0.7, which lies just below the amplitude at which you get stable oscillations. Uh, on the feature. So on the feature, as you can look by the graph here, uh, it will not be possible to sustain an amplitude of 0 0.7 because when the cantilever comes close to the sample, uh, it's going to snap down. So what happens in this case is what the controller is trying to do is uh, as you're scanning over the feature, the tip snaps into the sample, so the amplitude decreases to zero. But we want an amplitude of 0 0.7 times the free uh, amplitude. So the controller moves the ZPA as a backup uh, to try and get to that amplitude. And the tip is still stuck to the sample. And it keeps the base of the cantilever, Z keeps moving up until it snaps out. When it does snap out, uh, the amplitude becomes more than 70% set point. So the controller, then Z controller, tries to move it back down to try to get to this 70% um, set point. But if it comes any close, it's going to snap into the sample. And so by choosing a 70% set point, we're at the point where uh, we cannot have stable oscillations. The tip is just going to snap into the sample. Uh, so the 70% set point is not achievable in the context of this material that you're going to try and scan. So uh, what one could hope to do, therefore, based on this analysis, is that if one chose a set point ratio that lay, a, lay at a large enough value where you would get stable oscillations both uh, on the feature and on the sample, uh, you might be able to actually image the sample. But do keep in mind that even so, uh, the substrate always has a repulsive regime um, oscillation uh, in this particular simulation, whereas the uh, feature is going to uh, have a uh, attractive regime uh, oscillation uh, if you try to image at larger set points. So when this is repeated at a set point of 85%, 0 0.85, we see that the instability is gone. And indeed, you're able to scan the surface without the ZPAs are trying to go up and down to try and find this, um, this uh, forbidden amplitude uh, uh, over the feature. Uh, we do find there's a large transient as you get on the feature, uh, which uh, is due to an overshoot that occurs due to large uh, integral gains. So you can try to play around with the integral gain to try and reduce it. But what you have eliminated entirely is this this, this jagged up and down, completely inst unstable motion of the controller that would lead to, uh, you know, constant stripes uh, in your image as you imaged on a real AFM system. Uh, the other thing I want to highlight here is the fact that the uh, measured topography, which is what is shown uh, on this graph, uh, is not flat all the way through, even though in the simulation we had created an absolutely flat surface. The actual topography being measured here is not flat. It's flat while you're on the substrate, but when uh, you reach this feature, the feature appears is going to appear to be a little higher than the substrate. Why is that so? Uh, especially because the elastic modulus of both the feature and the substrate are identical. Why is it that the feature is going to appear to be a little higher? And the answer has to do with the fact that uh, we talked about the fact that at 85% set point, we're able to maintain a constant amplitude as we go over uh, from uh, 
uh, the uh, sample or from the substrate to the feature. However, 85% set point on the substrate corresponds to a repulsive regime oscillation. 85% set point on the adhesive uh, feature corresponds to an attractive regime of oscillation. In the attractive regime, the Z position of the cantilever tends to be a little further away from the sample and the tip doesn't come as close and doesn't indent as much into the sample. As a result, uh, the uh, feature is going to appear to be slightly elevated compared to on the uh, substrate. But, the, but in spite of this uh, uh, artifact, uh, at least we can observe that the controller instability due to having uh, a soft cantilever on a sticky substrate or a sticky feature has been eliminated. And uh, with that, I'd like to conclude uh, this lecture and uh, uh, we will continue in the next lectures to do further simulations with VEDA uh, to try and understand how you can control operating conditions for optimal imaging, both in tapping mode and then later in frequency modulation. Thank you.